Coming to you from a wrong turn off Route 66. Somewhere in the Sonoran Desert, it's James Out West, featuring Ryan Rooks. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, James Out West, October 21st, 2020. A little bit of ways away from uh, baseball almost being over. Thank you very much. Um, Last week sucked for lots of reasons. Uh, being a Browns fan was one of them. It was pretty good for this. Yeah, we Not didn't so expect that to happen. Yeah, Brown yeah. Team. We were the stank-ass team of the week. Yes. For sure. That was this right here. Y- yes. Um, and we'll get into that, obviously. Okay. Um, if you placed any bets by wagering from what I've told you, I take no responsibility for you losing your ass. Because you probably did. Uh, last week was bad, but hey, that's gambling, baby. That's gambling. It was bad. There were so many teams that either won, but we just didn't cover. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. It, it, was, it was so ugly. We'll just talk about the fact that it was ugly. A few things happened. A lot, actually, Denver getting the win solely by a kicker. That was Bill Belichick yeah, got that, beat by a kicker. Yep. Uh, you have some thoughts rough. on some teams, especially your Niners and some things that went down, and we'll get into uh, what the week was of week six in the NFL. I think uh, first and foremost, two is starting. I know they're coming off of, uh, they're going into a bye this week, so they're not going to be playing this week. But bench and bitch, okay. Um, Giants showed up. That they was did. Impressive. They did. Jets still didn't. No, and they're not going to all year. They probably won't win a game. No. Um, I realized what Baker Mayfield was doing. He thought he was in that Hulu commercial where it was Baker <laughs> Mayfield's head without Baker Mayfield's body. That's what he was doing last Well, week. I can tell you this. I know that his, when, you know, we're talking about how he got benched, you know, and mostly in, with what Kevin Stefanski said after the game was we had to get him out of there because he was already injured. We didn't need him to take any more havoc. The game was lost. They needed to have him sit. They were saving him from himself. This isn't a case Keenum's going to take over the offense. Uh, going to that week, Baker was number four in QBR in the NFL. Ever needs to pump the brakes on the cancel culture that we have that eat, that's bled into sports with Stephen A. Smith and all these other yahoos talking all this trash about these guys need to be traded and this guy's a bum. It's like if social media was around and this TV market was around when Peyton Manning was a rookie or when Troy Aikman was a rookie, they would not have had Hall of Fame careers because the media would have burned them to the ground. I told you they were going to run into a real defense. They saw it. Yeah. Yes, they did. Pittsburgh yep. blitzed like every play, three out of four plays. They blitzed seventy-five oh. percent of the game. So uh, we're still four and two. Yep. And like Baker said, this is the worst feeling. It feels like you're they're zero and six. To me, that's a win. To feel like that and still be at four and two, you got a get right game coming against Cincinnati. He does a lot of talking. Let's see. Let, let's see another week or two. And then let, <clears throat> so let me ask you: When you say he does a lot of talking, do you think he just goes around talking, or is he asks these questions in the media responsibilities that he has each week? Oh no, he says the right thing. No, what I'm saying, it's like just, they're asking him. Oh no, him. he's not going out of his way. No, yeah. he's not that. He's not that crazy quarterback that you know is on Twitter and, and doing crazy stupid stuff. The stuff he says, you got to back up. Like, yeah, he's so confident I agree. In the way he says, it. I that's, agree. That's where I'm coming from. Um, going back to Fitzpatrick. Yep. Being benched. I'm going to paraphrase what he said. He said, um, it's like being fired and then going into a Zoom meeting with the guy that fired you sitting with the guy that took your job for four hours. Yeah. Uh, He said, this one hurts. He thought if this was his team, he's been benched before, he's been cut before, he's been traded before. He said, it's never been like this. But he knew coming into this year, he wasn't. I think they told him this year would be you. Maybe it was. And the fact that they're playing decent football, and he's playing pretty good football, that why wouldn't you just let the kid learn? I think that they see Herbert, and they see these rookies coming out and playing pretty dang well. They want that. I think think they're they're more so itching just to see Tua and just see what happens. Yeah, because nobody has patience anymore. Right. Nobody has patience anymore. He'll get a two-game leeway, and if, if he's not doing it, Fitz will be back. Oh, you're going to pull the rook? No way. Once you put him you in, you can't so? pull him in. You don't that would be so. the dysfunction of the Miami Dolphins to do that. But no, once you make this pull, unless Tua gets injured, God forbid. Yes. Um, but, you know, you've already made the – this is the move. You've made the move. You're going with the rookie. I mean, now if Tua goes out and throws four picks and looks like tra- – I don't saying. think so, though. I, I think know. once you've made this know. decision, you can't go back. At least that's what they tell me on ESPN. <laughs> so, um, obviously, we got college football coming back. 
Big Ten. Big Ten. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, because real oh, college football is that, bad. That's what college These college last couple of weeks have been great. I love watching football on Thursdays and Fridays and Tuesdays and all this stuff. But the big boys are coming to play now. You're excited. Oh, I'm very excited. We play Nebraska. We got Halloween in Penn State. Come on, dog. That's going to be fun. Now, there's no fans. So, and I think Ryan Day and the Ohio State Buckeyes are out for blood. I think uh, with what happened on the conference call with the Big Ten coaches and ADs where uh, Jim Harbaugh was um, trying to throw Ryan Day and Ohio State Buckeyes under the, ben- under the bus about um, practice and how much they're doing and all this and that, and he told him, hey, Coach Harbaugh, worry about your team and I'll worry about mine. Yeah. We're going to hang 100 on you. Ooh. And then he went in to practice and said, boys, we're going to have to hang 100 on them. <laughs> and they want to, and they want to. They're, they feel like they've already been – no, no fault of their own. They've already been put at a hindrance because they couldn't get their act together to play college football. Obviously, sweet, I'm pointing to the television for you at home. Obviously, we see college football's happening. There's right. been some games cancels, quite a few. Right. But a lot of them have played. Gone off without a hitch. They've been exciting college football games. I think it'll happen. I think I'm more so curious, especially with the Big Ten. They live off of the crowd. They have huge crowds going to be completely different i'm sure they're going to pump in sound but i think that's going to be a little bit of a different game for those players but oh 100 percent, 100 percent. it's going to be it's football yep 100 percent. it's going to be if anything it will help michigan <laughs> home and away <laughs> boobers on both sides oh, i just got a text a my buddy my buddy thinks they're going to lose to minnesota this year michigan is going to lo- now minnesota's a good squad row the boat we'll see minnesota's a good squad row the boat pj fleck row the boat but it's michigan Either way, I hope Michigan doesn't win a game. Anyways, moving on. Uh, We're going to get to this week's picks here uh, coming up. Now, we do have a Thursday game. So far, no games have been canceled for coronavirus. Yep. Although, John Gruden in the Las Vegas Raiders sent home their entire starting five offensive linemen because Trent Williams has COVID. Yep. So, they may not have their O-line. They're probably going to play the game still. We don't know yet just because... Nothing's changed as far as I'm saying they're not going to play. But the Raiders are plus three, now plus three and a half. With this news, they're probably going to go to plus seven, maybe plus ten. I was going to take the Raiders. I don't have this marked yet, but just something to think about once we get to that game. That uh, For Monday night? That's a Sunday night game. That's a Monday night game. No, it's Rams. Monday night's I Rams Chicago. I it's see- hard seeing the LVR and the LAR. So here's the, the thing that, that I'm thinking. Tampa Bay looks good. They have a top-tier defense. The Raiders have been doing it quietly. And Gruden, I love that man. Oh, he's got him playing. It, it, I'm concerned to play scene. him. When I, looked at the seat, when I looked at the schedule in the beginning of the year, I was like, that's a win. It's at home in Cleveland. And it's the Raiders. So look, no, Carr's not so fast, my friend. good Chris freaking ball right now. He always does. I hate the car hate. I yeah, hate the car hate. Both you, of them. I like Tim Anna's brother. You know I'm from the Bay. My family split. Niners. Raiders. I got to give a shout out to my uncles. I'm taking the Raiders. Right on. Well, I'm going to see. I'm going to wait until I see that line. So I have it unmarked, but uh, we'll, see. we'll get to that. All right. So Thursday night football. The New York G-men at the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, like you said, the Giants showed up last week, played some inspiring football. Um, it's at Philly. Philly put Pittsburgh to the end. Now, granted, Pittsburgh was up big early, and Philly kind of crept back in. But the bottom line is they didn't give up. They've got a rookie. or not? He's not a rookie. This wide receiver that's come off basically because everybody's hurt. Uh-huh. He's killing right now. Fold him. Uh, Philly minus three and a half. Uh, Thursday night, road teams typically don't win. I'm going to take Philly in the three and a half. I'm taking Philly. It's the Giants. They, they, you, they won. They're still trying to put pieces back together. Philly needs this game. They've been close in almost every game. Well, if they win, they might put them in the division lead with the Cowboys with oh, two man. victories or three victories or something. So, the, But we'll get to, we'll we'll get get to, to that. that. All right, so now, Battle of New York. Buffalo Bills, that's right, of New York, because they're the best team in New York. They're the best team in New York. They are. At 
the New York Jets. Now, the Jets are plus 13. That's a big number. If I was in Vegas, this would not be on my list of games that I'm betting on. With that being said, I will take Josh Allen and the boys. They played a hell of a game against Kansas City in the rain. They were outmatched, honestly, yeah. and they did a damn good job of uh, keeping that game close, having the lead, taking it down to the... It was a quality team that they lost to respectively. Like They were in that game and had the lead a few times. I'm taking Buffalo, but I wouldn't take that plus 13. I'm taking Buffalo. The Jets, like we said, they're 0-5. They're going to be 0-6. The, the 13 points is a lot. But like you said, Buffalo will put up points. Yeah. If that game wasn't in the rain last week, like yeah, I they said, been, they both I, think been Buffalo, the 30s. I think Buffalo would have had it. Really? But Patrick Mahomey came back, did his thing. He always so does. I'm still taking Buffalo this week, though. Okay. All right. So now, oh, boy. I have to, because we're going to talk about this Browns game. They, they forced me to drink, folks. It's Cleveland's at Cincinnati. Cincinnati's it's plus three and a half. It is a choice. Uh, drink responsibly. <laughs> um, Cincinnati, they're still the Bengals. They're still trying to figure it out. I don't know that their coach is the right coach for them. I think they have some talent that's coming around Joe Burrow. Dude, but dude. again, Burrow gets hit all the time. And this defense that we have is tenacious. Um, I think Cleveland's a bounce back game for them as long as they don't put it all on Baker. This should be a big Kareem Hunt game. Yep. I think big defensive game. Yep. Uh, Browns, no question. Plus three, they're minus three and a half. I'll take that because they win by 10. I mean, we saw this game, what, three weeks ago? And you, you guys beat up on them pretty well. Yep. Decently. I, I, love, I think Burrow is, is going to be that next stud, but I completely agree it's the wrong coaching. Um, and I do, as much as I don't want to give you credit, I do think you guys will get a bounce back game. I take Cleveland. Right on. And it'll be 5-2, and two, and it doesn't feel like it, folks. But that's how bougie Cleveland Browns fans are. I'll say it. We're bougie. At 4-2, and two, we're bitching and wanting to bench our quarterback at 4-2. and two, We lost to two elite teams that are Super Bowl contenders. Did we get beat badly in both of them? Yes. That just shows we have room to grow. But guess what? We beat the teams we're supposed to. Yeah, but if you see yourself on tape, it looks bad. It does look bad. I get it. But again... Four and two with a chance to be five and two going into this Correct. week. I thought they'd be seven and four going into play Tennessee, and I think that's where it matches up. And Tennessee's really good. I still think the Browns are going to get 10 wins and could be swept by the Steelers and Pitt or and uh, Baltimore. We'll so, see, man. We'll see. all right, moving on. Dallas at Washington. There was no um, point spread on this. If I'm playing the eye test, I'm taking the upset. I'm taking the Washington football team at home against the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys quit last week, and now they're going to be on the road, and Ron Rivera is going to have them boys playing. Yeah, and. There was a report this week that uh, the Dallas Cowboys don't believe in the coaching. The players right. don't. Dallas is in first place with two wins and five wins in the division as a total. Mm -hmm. There's five other teams with five plus wins on, by themselves. Yeah, by themselves. That's why they're the NFC least. I initially circled Dallas. I can't do it. The more I think about it, I'm, I'm yeah. taking Washington. Yeah. I mean, it just makes sense. With Regardless of – first off, I think Washington plays decent football. They just don't have enough horses. They just don't have enough oomph yet. They'll get there. And Allen's still getting comfortable. Yep. And, you know, don't be surprised if you've seen Alex Smith uh, sighting. Uh, moving on. Detroit at Atlanta. Atlanta is minus three. Uh, got moved down to minus two and a half. Yeah. Um, I'm taking Atlanta. I saw an interesting stat. You know, Matt Ryan's third overall in yards passing in the NFL. He's got 11 touchdowns and four picks. This isn't his fault. He's Coaching got his staff's gone. Back. Yeah, he's got his weapons gone. You see what Julio Jones did? Yeah. You know where Calvin Ridley's at? Does that not say how much that the week after your coach is gone, your team is now they, yeah. they rolled that they had the game that I thought like I said they were going to have last two weeks ago but well yeah. we'll see we'll see I there I don't I think they're too far in the hole in that division to make a run but uh for this week um I'm going to have the Detroit Lions in Atlanta losing I like my Matt Stafford last week but I I, I agree I'm taking it uh, Atlanta all right so now this next game uh, Aaron Petty Rogers three pump flag on the play Rogers if you back didn't see a celebration. To back interception, yeah. Aaron Rodgers. At Houston. Houston's plus three and a half. Uh, I'm still taking Green Bay in this. I don't think... Uh, just listening to what Aaron Rodgers said this week in his uh, weekly interview with Pat McAfee, they do about 45 minutes. It's fantastic. They talk about everything. He even takes calls from listeners. It's really cool. But at any rate, his 
ability to stalk her much. No, I just watch it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, his ability to break down what they did well, what they didn't in a very indifferent way. Doesn't show a lot of emotion about it. You know, hey, listen, our offense did not play well. Right. And here's what we could do better. Here's what I could do better. And he took ownership. But he's been around so long doing this thing that he can do that. In Cleveland, you have that, and you have a meltdown. Let's trade the bitch. You know what I mean? This cracks me up. Uh, I'm still taking Green Bay. Uh, minus three and a half. I think they boat race the Houston Texans. I know Deshaun had a heck of a weekend last weekend, but I'm taking the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, you have to. Even though they looked rough last week, Aaron looked off. There was something wrong, it seemed like. I'm taking Green Bay this week. I'll go. My boy from the Bay, Cal, I'll take you. I'll take Aaron this week. Right on. All right, now, Carolina Panthers. Kind of a wishy-washy season. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is playing good football. Yeah. Um, losing, obviously, CMC's big. Mike Davis filling in greatly for him. Uh, at New Orleans, they're getting their, their swag the back. Uh, they're minus seven and a half. I'm still going to take New Orleans on that. I know I think that's – I mean, Vegas knows what they're doing. That's why it's at seven and a half. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to take New Orleans seven and a half. This was probably one of my hardest ones to pick. I, the only thing – my deciding factor was New Orleans is on the uptick. I'm going with New Orleans. Right on. All right, now moving on. Now this might be the game of the week. Yes. Pittsburgh at Tennessee. It's basically a pick 'em game. Tennessee's plus one. Um, I'm taking Pitt outright because it's going to make me feel better about the ass whooping we took last week. Um, in Tennessee, would I be surprised if Tennessee wins? Absolutely not. But if Pittsburgh's defense is as real as it seems like it's been through the first five weeks, they've got a lot of playmakers at every level. Um, Tennessee's offense is good, but not great. And they just lost their offensive lineman. Taylor Lewan? Yeah. So I'm going to go. Pitt's going to smell blood in the water. This could be a hold um, Derrick Henry to under 60 yards rushing type game. Um, make Tannehill throw the ball a lot, end up with two picks. You know, it could be a bad game. Or it's a knockdown slugout fest. I don't know what the weather's like, but I know the weather on the East Coast is going to be a little snurly this, this week. Yeah. You saw what happened in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, poured down snow yesterday. So the, the, the region's getting hit. Um, with that being said, Pitt's a, a good road team. Fans or no fans, taking Pitt on the road. Henry's a beast. That That's why boy, they call him King Henry. Man, what was that, a 94-yard run? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, ben looked a little bit off in the first quarter last week. He got his stuff together. He's getting it, but that defense is – your Browns made that defense look so good last week. Well, I don't know if we made them look so good. I'm going to um, say that they're that good. This is a tough game, but I got to go with Pitt. Right on. All right, now, for the locals, the Seattle Seahawks uh, at Arizona. Arizona plus three and a half. Arizona convincing victory against the Dallas Cowboys, no longer America's team. Yeah. Um, Seattle's on a roll. I think Seattle's really good. Um, Russell Wilson, Mr. Unlimited. He's really good. I mean, with, with Rodgers having a bad week, he's in the driver's seat of the MVP race, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, he hasn't stumbled yet. I'll say yet. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. You know, Mr. Come get you. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's go, boys. Oh, yeah. Let's go, boys. Let's go. It's work. We can do this. Let's win. go. All you do is win. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, they buy into it because he delivers amazing passes, amazing plays. The dude is playing on fire. Yeah. Um, I think Seattle wins this game in Arizona. I know, like I said, Arizona's plus three and a half. Um, I just don't think they're ready for this test yet. Um, I think offensively they can score with Seattle for sure. Yeah. Um, missing Chandler Jones, their best defensive player. They got Buda Baker back, and he had a hell of a game on Monday. Yep. Um, but ain't nobody stopping DK Metcalf. There's nobody stopping Tyler Lockett. Chris Carson's still a beast, and Russell Wilson is Russell Wilson. So I think Seattle's going to run – not run away with this game, but I think they have this game. I mean, you know how I feel about Seattle this year. I think Russell Wilson is hands down is going to be the MVP. They're solid right now, and Russell Wilson is putting it the ball exactly where it needs to be. you got a 6'5 guy that can have a 40-inch vertical. Just put it up there. Um, I definitely take Seattle, even though I think Kyler Murray is awesome. I mean, kids never lost to AT&T Stadium in yeah. his entire life. Yeah. All, all through college, all through high school, it, it's unbelievable. He's, he's a, a generational seven. talent. Kingsbury, he's got a, a great coach, but I still take Seattle. All right, I'm moving on. Oh, buddy. So your San Francisco 49ers are at the New England Patriots. Yep. Cam Cam back 
after his little hiatus. Uh, they have a, they're a two and a half point favorite in New England. Uh, I don't think Bill Belichick loses back to back weeks, regardless of who's quarterback and what's going on. And for them to lose the way they lost, I think San Francisco coming off of a high emotional high. Look at what we did last week. Woo! Uh, I'm taking New England minus two and a half. We looked good, and we made Garoppolo look good, look good because our defense and our running game showed up. Now you guys are without Mostert out on iron. And you guys are out in the next five weeks. Um, Richard Sherman and your other dude. Oh, lineman. Defo- no. I want to say DeForest Buckner. I have to look. It's two I people. I read, it, I, know, I read it today, and I was like, oh, really? It was going to so, be possible. But I didn't see who was actually out. But I, Cam looked off, and New England looked like a mess until, what, maybe eight minutes left in the fourth? Yeah. I, I'm going with my gut. I'm still taking us. We looked good last week. Okay. I'm taking Niners. Okay. As you should. As a homer pick, you should do that. Knock on knock on, knock on Niner. <laughs> All right, now. Kansas City at Denver. Denver's plus nine and a half. Kansas City coming off of that awesome victory against Buffalo on a Tuesday. Yeah. Um, rain and all. They look Who good. knows? Denver, it could pour down rain, pour down snow. Um. Mile high. Yeah. Altitude. Uh, plus nine and a half. I think Kansas City wins by 20 or more. So I'm going to take Kansas City. I think they'll be fine regardless if it's snow. Actually, I believe there's going to be snow. So. That's ambitious with 20. I'll still take Kansas City. But we'll see. I think Kansas City definitely handles this game. And uh, uh, yeah, I'll take that with the nine and a half. All right. Now, Jacksonville, who they play hard. Yeah. <laughs> Minshew's Minshew. got these boys playing hard. These guys, they have three legitimate receivers. Yeah. Legitimate receivers. Um, at the Chargers, this kid is playing real. Air Bear's playing real deal football. Herbert. He's playing real deal football. He looks great. But he hasn't gotten his first win yet. No. So will he do that? They're minus seven and a half. That's a heavy favorite. They're just over a touchdown favorite. Jacksonville puts up points. Um, I've got Jacksonville circle. I've been riding with Jacksonville. I don't know why. I picked them a lot. I just feel like it's going to burst. Not they're going to win a lot of games, but they should win a few. Um, they both have really. one win, right? Yeah, I don't okay. know if this is it, though. I've got them circled right now because I think that seven and a half is a lot. But, I mean, it took the Raiders a miracle yeah. to come back and do that. Uh, oh, my God, I'm going to take the L.A. Chargers. All right, I'm taking the L.A. Chargers minus seven and a half. Good Lord. You know I like Herbert. I'm taking Chargers. I already had them, though. And they get Keenan yep. Allen back. So I think that, that helps maybe put that icing on the cake. So now, Sunday night football. I'm got, no longer going to write LVR and LAR, especially when they're right you're getting next a mix. Yeah, you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you're no. You've got Tampa Bay, like we said, at the Las Vegas Raiders. Right. Now, quick question for you because you have Raiders family, yep. family basically. Oh, oh yeah. Yep. They're Hardcore. still Raiders fans. They're not. They're not leaving the team because no. they're not in Oakland anymore, right? They're now Las Vegas Raiders fans, yeah, right? They, they went okay. through the move to L.A. They came okay. back. They, okay. They're, yeah, for life. I was just making sure. Yeah. I've always – that's a good social experiment. I always wonder. Everybody that I've ever asked that that's a Raiders fan, oh, yeah, no, they're still Raiders fans. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Shout out to the Bowers. Let's see here. So, Tampa Bay. In – what do they call it? The Death Star? Yeah. No fans yet. Because Mark Davis says if they all can't be here, no one can be here. I thought I heard that they were going to do it this week. Are maybe, they? Maybe not. Ooh. To be determined. Either way, Raiders are plus three. I got moved to plus three and a half. People are really buying in on that Tampa Bay. Defense. Yeah. Um, and Tom Brady looking good and Gronk looking like Gronk. The week I dropped him in fantasy football. <laughs> of course. Uh, plus three and a half. Raiders. Um, hmm. Like you said, they're playing quietly, playing great football. Yeah. John Gruden's got these boys believing. Derek Carr's real deal. Uh, Josh Jacobs, real deal. Henry Ruggs, real deal. Whoa. Darren the Wallers. Waller, real deal. Dude. They have playmakers on defense. Is that enough to get past the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? If the crowd was there, this is one of those things, like if the crowd was there, that's maxed. It's opening week. Man, I don't know if you're stopping the Raiders' juice that they're going to have in that building. Yeah. Um, Tampa Bay, bunch of seasoned vets. Yep. That can travel, regardless if it was road noise or not. Um, I'm going to take the Raiders in this. Yep. I don't want to, but I think that they legitimately are going to win this game. 
And if they don't, they lose by a field goal. It's still kind of, you know, plus three. So I'll take the Raiders. I trust Gruden with the Raiders again. I'll do it. Got the Raiders. I like Carr. Like I said, I like Carr. Monday night football. The Chicago Bears are at the quiet, quiet L.A. Rams. LA Rams. Uh, folks, I don't know if you're watching any L.A. Rams games lately, but uh, Aaron Donald's still a beast. Jared Goff is still a pretty dang good quarterback. Uh, Bobby Trees, a.k.a. Robert Woods, is a manimal. Um, and they're getting no love, quietly. I'm sure they love it. I'm sure the brainiac, the boy genius, loves this. Um, they're minus six. I'm taking that all day. I don't believe in the Chicago Bears. I think the Bears are... You would like for Fold. me to say this. I think the Bears are like the Niners were last year, Fugazi. Now, the Niners made all the way to the Super Bowl, but we're seeing now the fugazi I knew it was there. Uh, don't I'm taking. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, I'm taking the L.A. Rams at home Monday Night Football. I think the Chicago Bears don't show up, and I think they lose by more than six. The Rams are what the Rams have been for the last five years, six years. They have a great season. They have a couple of great stretches, and then they suck for two or three weeks, or like five games. It's just it. That's the Rams' way. But I'm still taking the Rams this week. Right on. They lost last week. They'll win this week. Now, kind of going around, because, you know, there's a lot of things happening sports-wise. You know, baseball's going on. We do have the World Series going on. L.A. Dodgers are up. What a whooping. Yeah, one nothing. Clayton Kershaw getting over the playoff. Nips had a great game. Um, hope He's hoping for a sweep so he doesn't have to pitch again, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, we've got a problem in college football. The hypocrisy that is the NCAA. Yep. LSU is banning Odell Beckham Jr. For from, two years? For two years for handing out $100 bills to a few players after the National Championship game. Now, one, OBJ, you should know better. But two, he handed them to everybody that was leaving. They were no longer under the NCAA stipulation, which shouldn't get the school in trouble. Obviously, it didn't. LSU makes a ton of money off of OBJ. A ton of money through recruiting, through throwing his name around, through him showing up to high recruit things and games and things like that. Now he's not going to do that. They're shooting themselves and the in the other foot. other 100 players that yeah. they use them. Yeah. So that little bit of money, we've talked about this time and time again, folks. Uh, the NCAA stinks. And it and, was after the championship game, so technically they're done. Yeah. It was to nobody that's still on the team. Right. They all left. It was. Exactly. Under, underclassmen. Exactly. Yeah. Now, was OBJ yes. feeling himself that night? Absolutely. Is OBJ feeling himself every All night? the time? Yeah. <laughs> you heard, oh, and you heard what he said today. Now, I think he said it a little ton, tongue in cheek yeah. about the COVID. Yeah. About how I just don't think I'm going to get it. Like, yeah. He goes, I don't think it, he goes, look, it don't want it in this body. He goes, he goes, and I don't want it in my body. We have a mutual respect. He was, That's people are going to blast him. Ignorance. Yeah. People are going to blast him for not being sensitive enough to a global pandemic that kills less than 1%. Right. But still. He's still. It's him. That's how he is. And then the trade noise, it's like, I wish things could just be quiet with him and he could quietly go about his business, but that'll never be. Because he, first off, I don't think he could handle that. I mean, he's on Twitch three nights a week playing video games, which is fine. I'd rather him to be doing that than shenanigans around. I mean, he lives and breathes Laying and dies. A, a yeah, but he lives and breathes and dies football. It's, they truly, he, him and Jarvis, they really, really do. So, like, just, man, it's just, the, we are still the Cleveland Browns. We're the Charlie Brown getting ready to kick the ball, and she pulls the ball from underneath us, and we fall down every time. That's who we are. Um, but you'll still talk about it. Absolutely. <laughs> See? So uh, yeah, absolutely. You, you follow the OBJ way, too. Well, I mean, if I didn't, then okay, then we're not true fans, right? So Okay. Anyways. All right. So this was a nice, fun, tight episode. Yeah. Worked out pretty clean. I enjoyed it. Um, we're going into the next couple of weeks. Halloween's coming up. If you have kids, take them trick-or-treating. They've had to wear masks for six months. They can wear masks for one more night. I think it'd be okay. Um, our neighborhood's trick-or-treating for as much as I know we are. Um, social distancing to what you can, of course. And if you don't feel comfortable with it, then don't do it. That's okay. Yeah, everybody has their um, choice. I just hope the kids get to enjoy some normalcy. They're going to school with masks right now. Um, I hear a lot of them complain. A lot of them uh, are having a hard time with it. Um, we have We've, a lot of people who are going to do, like, uh, instead of having the kids walk around, just sit out in the front yard, and then if anybody else wants to walk around, okay. just even kind of kind say of So still get them out. party type stuff? Right. You know, get the fire pit out, even though, throw the TV on in the front. You know, well, you're yeah. going to have to have the TV on because Ohio State plays Penn State. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to make so sure I watch that. So that will be on, okay. on Halloween. Um, obviously, after that, uh, what, the next week after that, we have a pretty um, important day. 
a little bit in the history of the world. Might change some things. Uh, we're not going to know anytime. No, soon. we won't know anytime soon. Um, here's what I'll say. I hope whatever happens, positivity happens. I hope whatever happens that whatever oh, sure. change comes from whichever side gets it actually looks out for us because that's what's important. Um, we the people. For the people. By, By the, the people. people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that being said, uh, again, everybody, we've been ending this like this last couple of weeks. Um, it just feels right. Be patient. Be kind. Um, give people their distance, their space. You don't know what they're going through. They could have lost somebody recently. Now, one thing we do know is people aren't dying of old age and people aren't dying of cancer right now. So, I mean, COVID beat that. Oh, my gosh. So okay. uh, just be happy to be around people. Be patient. Be kind. Yeah. Give somebody a break. You don't know what they're going you know, through. Maybe they didn't mean to cut you off. So don't go flying them next to them and flip them off. Give them that break. Plus, you don't Give know who serial killer's out there, folks. You flip somebody off, all of a sudden, you might be in a hole in a bin putting lotion on. The lotion on the skin. Exactly. Okay. So, All right, with that, right. James out west. I'm Ryan. You guys have one a great love. one.